Hi guys, and welcome to part two of how to draw a repeating pattern. In the first part, you saw me design ink and paint this feather design. This time, I'll show you how I used Photoshop to tidy up the edges and make it seamlessly repeat. I'll also demonstrate some techniques and share some tips for creating a new digital repeating design from scratch. I'm using Photoshop version 21.2.2 on my Mac. I've started by taking a top-down photo. You could of course scan in your image. I use the crop tool with the ratio set at 1 to 1 and I roughly crop to just bigger than my design. I then use the transform perspective function to nudge the edges against the edge I cropped before, squaring it up. I'm trying to straighten out my edges and crop out any big white areas. Oh, and my image is upside down, but I haven't noticed yet. I open the 3D menu and choose New Tiled Painting from Layer. This shows us a basic repeat of our layer in a grid of nine. This is a 3D space and it does display a bit darker than our real image. We can see clear lines here where our edges meet. So in the History tab, I go back a step I change my image orientation so the design is the right way around now. Then I use Transform Warp to refine my edges some more, trying to push out the areas where I saw white in the 3D preview. Now the most useful tool I think I can share is this. In the filter menu under Other is Offset. Be sure that the wraparound box is checked and use the horizontal and vertical sliders to uh, find your mismatched edges and bring them in from the edges of the image. Now we can clearly see where we need to refine. I go to filter and select liquify. I make my brush size a bit smaller and I use the liquify function to distort the edges and make these lines on the feather match better so that their angles match. Next, I'm going to use the Clone Stamp tool with a soft round brush. I'm using the Option key on the keyboard to click and define the area to be copied. Then I'm drawing over the join to blend it in to the rest of the area. I'm constantly changing where I clone from, being careful to try and match the color and I select areas of pure colour, so I'm trying not to clone areas of line work. Now I change to the brush tool. I use the Option key again to eyedropper select the colour of my existing line work. And I use the Kyle Ultimate Thick and Thin brush. I draw and fill in any missing areas of line work here, further blurring this visual join. I move along and I repeat these steps again for the rest of the horizontal and then the vertical joins. I use the Filter Other Offset tool again and I use the sliders to move the image around. I spot a couple more areas to be tidied up. On this area, I decided to redraw the line work. I just use a blender brush to blot out the lines and then the clone stamp tool again to move some other colors back into the area. I finish off by using the thick and thin brush again to redraw the lines. A useful keyboard shortcut once you've used the offset function is Control, Command and F all together. This repeats the last used filter and it can keep re-wrapping your image and showing you a fresh view. I go to 3D and select New Tiled Painting from Layer to preview my repeat again. I zoom in and out and it looks a lot better now. Some of the darker areas are standing out too much to me though, 
I do want to add some more shaded areas to even it out. I open a new layer and I change the blending style to multiply and using a soft round brush I choose a darker version of the colour I want to add shade to. I draw in some shadows and I change the layer style to darken to see if I prefer it. I combine my two layers into one and I use the offset tool to check the repeat from a few different views. I then use the new tiled painting function to check the repeated view. You can see here how it's generated in a 3D workspace. Now I don't understand the 3D section of Photoshop well enough to understand why it appears darker or how to make it brighter. Please, if you know, let me know in the comments. I undo the tiled painting preview again, returning to the single view. And I am happy with the overall look of the repeat, so I save my file as a PNG, uh, ready to upload to Spoonflower.com. Now I'm certainly not sponsored by them, this is just a website that I enjoy using. It's easy to use. I just open my design library and click on add design. I select my PNG file and upload. I can see my fabric previewed here and I can change the design size to be larger or smaller. The lower drop down here changes the scale on the preview to be an 8 by 8 inch test swatch, a 21 by 18 inch fat quarter or a 42 inch wide yard. You can also see your design previewed on various products which is so cool. Wallpaper or tablecloth, tea towel, duvet, pillows. Here you can see how the different repeat types work too. You can tailor your design to work properly for these types of repeat when you create it. Now, I'll show you how I like to create a digital repeating design using many of the same techniques as you've just seen. I'm going to use a limited colour palette using Photoshop's Colour Themes tab. You can create a five colour theme using different colour rules and play with the sliders to find a selection you like. I'll use my monochrome blues for now. I'm in the mood for a Halloween design, so I sketch a bat from some reference. I'm doing this on a new layer named Sketch. I lasso my bat and I move it aside. Then I sketch out a moon with a face, my next design element. On the same layer again, I now sketch two pumpkins. I use the lasso tool to move and resize the sketches. I decided to redraw the pumpkin face here. I copy and cut the bat. I use the offset tool to reposition the gap that I want to paste it into and I drop it back in. I continue to nudge the sketches around until I'm happy with the layout. I use the 3D Create New Tiled Painting tool to preview the overall look of the repeat. Now I draw in my final line work onto a new layer. I use the offset tool to bring each sketch to the centre. Since I have separate layers, I also have to offset my line work layer 
the same number of times so that they realign. The offset tool doesn't really want to work on grouped or multiple layers at once. I add in a light orange colour to add some contrast. And then I draw in leaves to fill in the background areas. I check my repeated view again and I'm happy with how it came out. Just like part one, I upload my design to Spoonflower and I can see how it would look as a wallpaper, tablecloth or bedding. Before I leave you, I have just a couple more tips that might help you when you're creating a repeating pattern in Photoshop. The first one I'll demonstrate with some crazy paving. Drawn using the offset tool and then viewed as a 3D new tiled painting. In your layers tab, you'll see the background layer style. It's right at the bottom here. Double click on it and it will open your original layer view plus all of these crazy grid lines. Our tiled painting view still exists in another tab, so Go up to Window, Arrange, to Up Vertical and you'll now see both a single and a tiled view simultaneously. As for the crazy grid lines on the single view, again I've no idea how to get rid of them. If you know then please tell me. They aren't really on the image though so you can keep drawing in this view. You'll see that they update each other live so you can draw directly into your tiled or your single view, being able to see the overall tiled appearance as you go. You're able to save either image as your file type of choice. I could see this being useful when you're designing floor tiles for games. Finally, I wanted to mention some other types of pattern repeat, the half brick and half drop. To create a half brick design, you could avoid breaking your upper and lower borders to begin with. Use the offset tool to scroll only through the horizontal scale to then view your pattern repeat. You can then Shrink and clone your images and drag and drop your sections into the brick layout like this. Similarly, with a half drop pattern, keep the left and right edges clear and use the vertical scale on the offset function to flesh out your design. And again, to preview how the repeat will look, just clone and drag your image like this. And you can certainly go back and forth adding more to your design and lining up elements which would break through these half-matched borders. It's just a bit trickier than a straight repeating pattern. Well, I do hope there were some useful tips and tricks for you today. These were all bits of information and techniques that I'd heard and found from all over the place that I wanted to bring together into one video for people to reference. So I hope it helped and feel free, as always, to share your own ideas in the comments. I'll see you next time. Bye!